Welcome. I'm Nancy Granquist, and I'm so excited to be hosting this podcast. Today is our first episode, and we're going to talk about redefining beautiful and woman as the image bearer of God. I'm so thrilled to be here in Sydney, Australia, with some very dear and wonderful lifelong friends, Gina Gretsch and her extraordinary daughters, Stephanie Hackathorn and Taylor Morris, who have so graciously agreed to be on this podcast with me. Well, that was gracious, wasn't it, you guys? <laughs> I also want to thank Greg Hackathorn for his help and his assistant, Stefan Morris, um, with this podcast. And I would like to invite you to visit Greg's brilliant podcast. It's called The Hacka Podcast. And um, he does streams every week, just with great new, fresh material episodes. And so please go to the Hacka uh, podcast. And I've watched some of them. They're absolutely inspiring and amazing. So during the next few moments, I'd like to discuss some principles and ideals that support the role of women as the image bearers of God. I wanted to start with, I've written some declarations. I've written 12 declarations, and I wanted to start with the first one that is according to Revelations 12 and 11. It says, I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Such a powerful scripture. And just very quickly before I bring my guests in to talk, I just wanted to briefly um, reminisce over the story of the Egyptians and the Israelites when, um, in Exodus 12, when the Israelites were instructed to, to put the blood of the lamb, the sacrifice, over their doorposts, and they would be protected and safe. And um, with that instruction and their obedience, every Jewish household was safe. And of course, we know the story that every firstborn of Pharaoh and, and the Egyptian people, they lost their firstborn sons. So it's a, a type and a shadow of the saving blood of Jesus Christ that today we've known that blood. It's been applied to our lives forgiving us of all of our past mistakes and cleansing us of all of our sin. As women bearing the image of God, we walk in that freedom. It's, it's amazing. And we walk in the beauty of God's righteousness and power. So today, Gina, I wanted to ask you this question. When you consider being an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb, and you are a powerful minister of God, you've got I don't know how many degrees in psychology and, and you have labored in the Sydney church here for uh, over 40 years, I think, with Pastor Slack and now with Pastor Harvey. But as a leader and, and as a mighty woman of God, I, I'm asking you a question. How do you live your life each day walking in the freedom and beauty of God's righteousness and power. Can you just, just talk about that for a second? Well, it's lovely to be here on the podcast. Thank you, Sister Granquist, for allowing us to be here. That's a very deep question. Um, but in thinking about responding to that question, I think there are certain things in our life that help us to continue to overcome and draw on that blood of overcoming from the Lord. And one of those is to seek his presence daily, is pursuing God on a daily basis mm -hmm. and walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. The Bible says walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. But it's a matter of being conscious of that. It's a matter of inviting God's wisdom into our life, being generous in our lives, um, and allowing God to lead us. When we claim the promises of God that we are made in God's image, that gives us the power, the confidence mm. to then walk in that victory. We know that the victory is already won. So it's us claiming that and walking in that through the power of his word 
and daily connecting with him, that's where we receive our strength. That is where we receive our, our source of power from. So that is how I believe that we can walk and live each day in that freedom. And whatever God created, he said, is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that includes you and I. Oh, yes, that's beautiful. That we are beautiful. Thank you so much. Steph, could you just add on to that a bit? So I would say for me, uh, you know, how you live each day walking in the freedom and beauty of God's righteousness would be the renewing of my mind, our minds. Um, the Bible says don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and I think that's a daily thing for me as well. Um, with the way the world is at the moment, with the way life is, every day brings a new challenge. Uh, I have young kids as well. Uh, work, I work in a secular job, um, the church as well. Not allowing things of the world, um, thoughts and imaginations of the mind to take over, setting boundaries around that. That um, Does this line up with the word of God? And when I check what I'm feeling or thinking against the word of God, um, I can see truth for what it is. And that helps, I think, for me to live in that freedom, um, to know what the word of God says and to check everything I'm, I'm experiencing or feeling or against that. Um, I love that. Walking in that. That's yeah. beautiful. How about you, Taylor? Um. When you, Steph, mentioned the thing about your mind, um, I thought about First Peter where it talks about being sober-minded and preparing your minds for action. Um, and that's part of the thing that we look at at the moment. Sometimes we look at our actions and we consider, I want to change that. I want to, how can I make my actions righteous? How can I um, be more powerful in my walk with the Lord? So we're looking at our actions, whereas most of the time the writers of especially the new testament would always focus on the mind the mind first and then the heart and then thereby your actions would flow out from from that and so how do you live your life each day walking in the freedom and beauty of god's righteousness and power very much goes back to what is my mind thinking mom you always talk about you know there is power in what i say and you know taking thoughts captive and things like that so and so i think that is definitely especially in this world where you, your mind just races at an incessant pace, being able to acknowledge the thoughts that come in. Is this from the Lord? Is this, you know, contributing or is this worsening my mind? Am I living by God's righteousness and power in my mind? So, yeah, I, I think it always starts in the mind, renewing your mind, taking thoughts captive um, and renewing them with the word as well. It's beautiful. We're talking about being overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. That, that's so powerful, you guys. Um, I wanted to just go to the next question. Um, and you kind of touched on this, Steph, but our lives are not merely a reflection of, the glo of his glory. But we have become the glorious anthem of God's righteousness. And just as he demands righteousness... God has given us his, so the truth allows us to live an overcoming life, Steph, that you'd mentioned that. So, so I, I want to ask you to comment, Gina, how does the truth of God help us to live as overcomers? So God has called us to live overcoming lives. He's given us the power to do that, but we have to believe the word. Even as Christians, sometimes, even though we say we believe God's word, then do our actions actually demonstrate that? So it's not only believe or reading and believing, but it's acting on that faith. I am an overcomer. The blood of the lamb has, has done that for me by the word of my testimony. So it's realising that it is a battle. It is a battle of the mind that that is where our battle is fought, that I am an overcomer. It is renewing my mind with that, not because of what lies within me per se, but what God has put within me. That's so good. Mm. Powerful. Mm. How about you, Steph? Something to add to that? Uh, 
everything I've learned has come from my mother, generally. <laughs> <laughs> my mother and the word of God. So <laughs> not too much oh, to add to that. She's a wonderful I teacher know. and mentor, this mother it of It is. Um, to be honest, I, I don't, I can't really she add just to say that. it all for you? <laughs> exactly. It, it's believing and um, living it out. It's, it's an, I can quote scripture. I, I was mm-hmm. raised on quoting scripture. Mm-hmm. I can tell you a scripture for anything you're going through, but actually walking in that and believing that, um, you know, forgiveness, for example, you, you can verbally say you forgive someone, but then anytime they're in the room, you walk the other way or you leave the, what it, I, I would say you're not really acting out forgiving that person. And you don't have to be best friends, but there has to be action involved. So I don't really have much to add to that. I've seen it in my own life that we're, you, you believe the word, you say the word, but then you have to live it. That's so I, true. So I can true. say things to my children, yes. but if I'm not living it, then what example is that mm-hmm. to them? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Kind of Tay- Taylor, you got something? It's really intimidating being the last person, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I think... It's taking God's word as truth. It's actually not just a mental assent that, yeah, 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 that's true, that's true. But it's having the mind that, okay, God's word has always been true. God has always, he's the covenant-keeping God. He Mm -hmm. has always made true on his word. Yes. So if he never changes and his word will never return void, then it be, how could I not? How, how could I not trust in the word of God and trust that he would fulfill yes. the things that he, he said he would? So it's settled in heaven. That's right. mm-hmm. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word, it's, it's forever. Mm-hmm. It's forever. Thank you so much. So we don't, we don't bow to the pressures of our culture mm. or align with the fraudulent practices of the voices of, of today's world as God's women and the image bearers. We don't bow to that pressure. And our lives are covered by the blood. So I want to ask, uh, Taylor, (laughs) (laughs) how how do you stand? Okay, so uh, you're an RN and you work in hospitals in the ER. And so, you know, you don't live in this little bubble You know, you live in the real world and you work a secular job as a registered nurse, but how do you stand up against the pressure of of what's out there? Social media um, and, you know, when everybody is maybe around you is liberal and the whole thinking process goes so far from the holiness of God's word and what we believe is truth and our whole lives are built on those principles, but... Mm -hmm. How do you stand up against the pressure of social media and our culture as a Christian, as an individual, as a woman, as the image bearer of God? I don't think that there is a one-size-fits-all in this, and I don't think that I've ever stood up, per se, in the same way um, in all the seasons of my life. I would also say, um, and I say that because in in the job that I was in, there were things that I couldn't say verbally, and I couldn't perhaps make known beliefs and what and those sorts of things. Um, but the way that I lived my life through the wisdom of Mum <laughs> um, was a way that people knew. I hope. Well, yeah, they did know that I was a Christian. And that there were certain things and places that I wouldn't go, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't engage in. And I remember there was this one particular time I invited a friend over from work um, to have a meal. And we said goodbye and all the rest of it. And she said, you know, I I really enjoy coming over here. And I said, oh, why is that? And she said, oh, you're one of the only people that I know that doesn't need to necessarily have a good time. in inverted commas, to have a good time. And it really struck me that it was the absence of the highs and the lows and just the consistent, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to believe the things that I know are true. 
and I don't need to be aggressive about it. I don't need to fight for it. The Lord fights for me. The Lord will exact justice if it needs to be exacted, then the Lord will fight for me. I don't need to um, make myself known, if that makes sense. Um, so standing up against the social pressure is honestly standing on the word of God and, and allowing him to fight for me. That's beautiful, Taylor. Yeah. I love that. Thanks. So powerful. Girl, Steph, mom? Um, how do I stand up against the pressure of social media. I would say I didn't do a good job of this a few years ago or growing up. I think I was a teenager when social media was becoming a thing. It wasn't really back then. It was MySpace and some other, you know. Uh, it wasn't what it is today. Yeah. Now on your phone, you've got Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Mm -hmm. The list is endless. Mm -hmm. And I would say... When they say comparison is the thief of joy, it's so true. I think for my generation, maybe, I don't think it's just myself for the generations underneath me. It's this looking at what you have, looking at what other people have and desiring it, comparing what you have against what they have. It's it's a, just a comparison. Um, and even if you don't notice it's happening, it is happening because you see something in a store and you're like, uh, I saw this somewhere and I really want this or I'm upgrading something that doesn't need to be upgraded, whatever it may be, just that basic sense of mm -hmm. you're seeing the highlight reels, you're seeing people who don't live in the same circumstances as you, don't have the same income as you. Um, even in a church sense, I just raised this recently with Greg, it comes to mind, is this profitable? Is this profitable to the kingdom of God? Is me spending my time on social media to the extent I am or I was or whatever it may be, is it profitable? Um, is coveting or desiring what someone else has, whether it be skill or talent or something physical that I can purchase, or is it profitable to the kingdom of God, to what I am fashioning my life around the call of God and, and reaching people for, you know, for the kingdom of God? Is what I'm doing profitable. Is it of eternal value? That's it. Yeah, and, and you know the scripture that says it's so unwise to compare yourself. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that is one of the great fallacies of our world today mm. is that because it, it really makes women, I think particularly, feel like they're not enough. That's like it. Like if I don't have this or I don't, look this certain right, way, or right. I'm not accepted into this group, and that's all lies. It's all a pack of lies, because we're accepted, we're beautiful, we, exactly. you know, um, yeah. yeah, so, well, how about you, you have anything to say on that? I was just going to say, the way that I deal with social media, because I don't get on a lot, but, you know, sometimes you do see, it's like, wow, they're this, they're that, is I remind myself that we, in God, I am enough. Yeah. So good. I am enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect, but in God's eyes, I'm enough. Oh, yes. And that comes back to his, because I'm his image bearer. That's exactly. I am enough. How can we demonstrate humility yet operate within the gift of God's anointing and minister? I mean, we want to be anointed of God, we, we, we have, I believe that as the image bearers of God as women, he gifts us with things. He gives us uh, intuitive wisdom. You know, mothers, they say, have eyes in the back of their head, you know, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, but I, I think that as women, we have an amazing perception about situations and uh, we, we see and know things. But in that, we have to always be mindful of that that's, these gifts are from God, mm -hmm. uh, that he's given, he's trusted us with these gifts. And we're the, we're the conduit of the spirit of God. And so, but with this, it's so critically important. We have intuitive wisdom, but we walk in a true spirit of humility. And we have the understanding and the revelation. It's nothing about us. Mm -hmm. It's all about the power 
and the goodness mm -hmm. and the righteousness of God. But you know, how do we how do we portray that? I mean, any thoughts on that? Uh, one of the things that I've learned over the years, being able to minister in different places and one of the things that I always remind myself, that without him I can do nothing. So good. Without him I can do nothing. Right. I remind myself of that. And that Jesus was humble. And this is something that I've come to, that I've just started writing this uh, in regards to anointing. Anoint the anointing of God comes from being with God, yeah. not from doing for God. Mm. So there's a difference there. Mm. If I want anointing, it doesn't come from doing necessarily. We need to do. Yeah. But it comes, anointing comes from being in the presence mm. of God. Mm. And in that comes humility, remembering that I am just flesh. Mm. I am nothing without God. Mm. And that's how I believe that. And, you know, things happening that don't go your way, mm. when you don't hit the ball out of the park, mm. that you, uh, humility comes. Yes. Humility yes. comes. Yes, well, that's so yeah. good, Gina. Guys? So when have you never hit the ball out of the park? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> exactly that what I was there. wondering. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, again, we, we have learnt from mum, so nothing uh, I have to say she hasn't said, but uh, along the lines of what she's already said, when a door opens, it's because God's opened the door. Mm -hmm. I'm not forcing any door open. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't self-promote. Um, nothing like that. It's any door that is open, any opportunity we get, it's because God has given us that. So and um, like mum already said as well, without God, I'm nothing. I can't, I can't put words together that will bring people, you know... I, God's got to be in it. Mm -hmm. I can't string words together or sing a song through my own. Fl There's nothing I can do without him. And so mum used to say this all the time, you know, Steph, just let God hands. God will open the door. God will close the door. God will, you don't need to force your hand. You don't need to do whatever. God's, if God will open it, God will equip you to do it. So um, I, I think love that's, that. that's. I love it. that so much. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to come to you, Taylor, but we, we were just going to go on to this, um, this. We're talking about being overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I just, um, I wanted to just briefly cover this before we close this podcast. But um, in the word of our testimony, I looked at the women in the ancient world and how they lived out their lives and the testimonies of, of God's miraculous intervention. And today... Taylor and Steph and Gina, you are writing your stories. You are writing, we are writing our right. testimonies. And so um, I just looked at some of these women and briefly went through and I just, I just wrote a tad about how um, Sarah in her season of barrenness, um, she gives us the courage to believe in the promises of God that even in seasons of bleak destitution, unfulfilled desires when when everything looks like it's, mm. it's wow this is just not happening that god remains faithful and we can stand on his promises and and jacobed the mother of moses how that she kept the baby hidden and i as the children were playing around here as your grandchildren gina were laughing and and playing around the kitchen tonight it it filled my heart to overwhelming. They're so precious. But I thought about Jacobed's story, this, this woman that hid the baby and, and put it in a basket, put it on the crocodile-infested Nile, believing that somehow God was going to... What a powerful testimony that she left for us as women of the image bearers of God. And then you look at, oh, there's so many. Uh, what about Ruth? What about the Samaritan woman? And then... And then I think about, what about us? What about you, you young women today? Steph, what is the testimony of your life at this moment? The word of your testimony. Trusting God. Um, You're launching a church? We are. It's, you can cry. It's, <laughs> it's fine if you want to cry. But, but the testimony of your life, it's so, the other night, Sunday night, when we launched the church, yeah. 
in Central Coast, Pentecostal to Central Coast, and I looked at an army that came and stood behind you, people that you've been mentoring, teaching Bible studies to, and, and birthing this church. But when I looked and I saw the testimonies of Greg and your life, and, and then Stefan and Taylor, and of course your mother, and what a powerful testimony. So, so if you're able to just, you know, just talk a moment about yeah. the testimony of your life at this moment. Testimony of my life at this moment is trusting God, following his leading and guiding, not relying on what I thought life would look like. From a young age, I remember praying in altars that, God, whatever you want for my life, I want to do. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. And a preacher once said, we sing these songs of, um, I surrender all and all these classic mm. songs. It's like, do we really understand what mm, we're singing? So true. Do we really understand what we're praying? Um, and so I think seeing the fulfillment of that, I'm, and again, I I believe it's a journey and this is a season we're, we're in at the moment. But just trusting God that, Lord, if I've personally, if I've made something an idol, if I'm, if I'm, hesitant to walk into the next season because of where I currently am and I'm comfortable where I am and I'm content with where I am. Then God's shaking me out of that and he's moving us into this. And, yeah, we've, we've, church, we've planted a church, um, but we are affecting generations to come and that's the testimony of where we are. There's families on the Central Coast that have children who haven't grown up knowing God and because we were, we stepped out, followed the leading of the Lord, and we had a team who felt the same way. Um, because we started church there, the, their parents are coming to church, and now they're going to Sunday school, and they're going to be that sa- they're they're getting the Holy Ghost, they're getting mm. baptized, Thank and you, Jesus, and their children, are, <clears throat> you know, it, yeah. we're affecting generations yes. to come. I'm yes. my mum was in church, my grandmother was in church, so. Um, my testimony at the moment is just following the Lord's leading and guiding, whatever that may look like. Um, because otherwise it's all for naught. It's why I'm here. It's why we're it's here. why I was raised. My, the way mum raised me was to follow the word, follow the leading of the Lord, Steph, Beautiful. in every area. So. What, a great, what a great testimony. How about you, Taylor? It's actually... Um, yeah, it's completely different. That's fine. <laughs> That's the of it, different testimonies. Yeah, um, but it, if anything, you know, it's with Steph going out and obviously raised the same way, um, but in the opposite way, it's more so at the moment for my life and our life with, with my husband, um, it's waiting on the Lord. It's, no, this is putting your hands to what he has in front of you now and seeing there is still work to be done. There is still things that you can serve in. And and I think that's one of the things is that we can constantly look for that open door and that way out. Like, oh, Lord, is this what you have for me? Is this what you have for me? Is this what you have for me? And consistently trying to ascertain if, if what is, oh, is this little thing it? Um, instead of just standing and waiting and allowing the Lord to open the door, allowing the Lord to lead you. And if he hasn't, it's there's still work to be done. Yes. There are still lives to be changed. Yes. And, um, and, yeah, I think that was, that's one of the things that mum raised us to work <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. I remember being like six years old and we would have to show up to church super early and there was nothing else to do but fold these like handouts <laughs> from the 1990s with <laughs> like, you know, the Lord, the right. Psalm 91, whatever it is, like it was corny. It busy. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, I but love it was that just, so much. I it, love that. But, and that's the thing, I don't know what else to do but to be busy. To be busy. Yes. Yeah. To that's just beautiful. whatever you can. Um, and not waiting for that 
big, grand. And, and that's the thing. Like, Lord, if this is all you have for me, that's enough. That's, that's fine. Like, this is it's more than fine. Like, this is what it's for. It, it's not for the next big door. It's not for, it's just, okay, they need help with the church let's go and set up chairs <laughs> let's let's pack up chairs they need you know someone to make rosters I can make a roster like that's fine I can make some sandwiches on a Sunday that's fine Lord if this is what you have that's it's good it's unto you and it will always be for you mm-hmm. and I think oh. that for me is, is the testimony right now mm-hmm. that's so beautiful so Gina how can we establish the promises of God by the testimonies of our lives. Well, I'm really emotional now listening to my <laughs> girls. <laughs> Is there any Kleenex in the house? <laughs> <laughs> we, we need a box here. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> How do we establish the promises of God by the testimonies of our lives? I think it's in the day-to-day living that we build a testimony that, you know, something grand may not happen today, but I was faithful unto the Lord. Beautiful. And tomorrow something may happen that, that stretches that faithfulness. Mm. But then I continue to walk because I've been faithful. And so it's in the day-to-day faithfulness unto the Lord that my testimony grows and it becomes a testimony to generations coming after me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was so emotional at the launch, even though it's been going for nearly six months. I was so emotional at the launch. And I've said this to Steph and Greg, or to Steph. I said, I'm so proud of you from this is what I raised you to do. But as your mother, I look at the work ahead and it, you want to protect from that. Yeah. But it's like, God, that's your faithfulness. If we don't fulfill your will, we won't have the testimony. I want on my, when I die, if I die before the Lord comes back, I want the testimony that, one, I was a prayer, and two, I was faithful. That's my testimony, that I'm faithful. We, as the image bearers of God, women, are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I want to thank you three powerful women here in Sydney, Australia, for bringing us your heart. I feel like that God has been here at this table with us. And I just want to say this. I don't ever want any of you forget to forget, all of you that are listening to this podcast, Don't ever forget, you're the wonder of God and there's not another one like you Mm -hmm. in all the world. Mm -hmm. God bless.